aware. Um, the event is being recorded, that way everyone can have access uh, later, so just know that. Uh, we are so thrilled that you're here and other people may be joining us. My name is Adriana Dominguez and I'm an assistant professor, Department of Theater and Dance, also the director of the theater programs. And this is part of our Dean Speaker series. Um, we had started in spring, we were gonna have spring into representation and now we're falling into it, I guess. And the goal was really to bring in um, scholar artists to talk to students and to the community about what it is that they do, their artistic journey. We have uh, you know, specific workshops, but then also discussing representation uh, in the performing arts. Uh, and so we are super lucky that many of our artist scholars were still very willing to give of their time and talent, even though we're in this pandemic land. Uh, so we're super excited uh, and extremely grateful. Um, before we move on, we just always wanna recognize, um, you know, that there have been injustices happening in a variety of spaces. Uh, and so if you'll just join me in a moment to recognize um, that that is occurring in our community, uh, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, my colleague, uh, an amazing co-conspirator in so many projects, uh, Assistant Professor Kim McKean, and then she'll lead us into our guest for today. Yes, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's great to see so many faces from the department and uh, from the greater community as well. I am thrilled to introduce Anne Garcia Romero to you all. I met Anne uh, last August at the Association of Theater and Higher Education Conference, and uh, we had a really lovely dinner together and got to talk about our work and her work, and I got to read her some of her amazing plays, which we will uh, show you how you can read those at some point, direct you to that. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about her before, before she begins. So, um, Anne Garcia Romero's plays have been developed and produced, most notably at the New York Shakespeare Festival, Public Theater, the Eugene O'Neill National Playwrights Conference, the Goodman Theater, Denver Center Theater, the Mark Taper Forum, Hartford Stage, Borderlands Theater, National Hispanic Cultural Center, Nevada Repertory Company, LA Theater Center, Kitchen Theater, and South Coast Rep. She has also written for Peninsula Films, Elysian Films, and Disney Creative Entertainment. Her translation of the, is it the Grolam, Anne? Am I saying that correctly? Okay. The, the Grolam Method by Jordi Gal Serran has been produced in Los Angeles and London. She's been a Jerome Fellow at the Playwright Center of Minneapolis, as well as a McDowell Colony Fellow. Her plays are published, and this is where you can listen so you can buy them and read them, Broadway Play Publishing, No Passport Press, and Play Scripts. Her article on Latina playwrights appears in the Latin American Theater Review. She is a founding member of the Latinx Theater Commons where she contributes to the Maria Irene Fornes Institute. She is an alumna of Chicago Dramatists and of New Dramatists in New York City. Her book, The Fornes Frame, Contemporary Latina Playwrights and the Legacy of Maria Irene Fornes explores the work of six award-winning Latina playwrights. So it is my pleasure to bring Anne Garcia Romero uh, with Adriana to UTEP into the Dean's Speaker Series. And uh, although we can't have her in person with us, we are so thrilled that she is here with us over Zoom today. So Anne, you can take it away. Thank you so much, Adriana and Kim. I also wanna thank um, our colleague, Georgina Escobar, um, who uh, also, introduced me to Kim originally, um, and who's uh, an important part of the community, um, I know. Um, so yeah, I'm really thrilled to be here today with all of you to talk about the Forna's playwriting method, um, talk a bit about my work, and then lead us in a playwriting workshop um, utilizing the Forna's uh, playwriting method. Um, so we'll, we'll, I'll spend a little bit of time um, telling you a bit about myself. I have some images to share with you, a brief video to share with you, and then we'll spend the majority of our time um, doing writing together and then talking about that writing process. Um, 
So uh, a little bit about me, um, as uh, uh, Professor McKean mentioned, um, I'm a playwright as well as a theater studies scholar. Um, and I say both of those um, uh, areas of, of work because for me, the artist scholar or the scholar artist is a really important um, path that um, I have chosen to, uh, to uh, walk down <laughs> low these many years. And, um, and I've both been a professional playwright and then um, went back to school to get my doctorate in theater studies. And so also write about plays and playwrights. And um, as was mentioned, I wrote a book about Maria Irene Forness and her legacy called The Forness Frame. And uh, shameless plug, I'll just do it right now. Here's the book, ta-da! Um, so you can get that wherever you get books. Um, so, um, so I'm gonna talk a bit about now um, my relationship with Maria Irene Forness, who was both my mentor and my teacher. Um, so I um, began writing plays when I was in college, like all of you. Um, I went to Occidental College in Los Angeles um, and studied theater arts and began writing plays. And I had a play produced in my junior year in a festival on campus. And I fell in love with playwriting. Um, as a young person, I had performed in musicals and, um, you know, uh, loved writing poetry and playing my guitar and all these things that led me to wanting to write for the stage. And so I began pursuing it after college. Um, I spent a couple summers at the Padua Hills Playwrights Festival, which was this really amazing festival in Los Angeles. It's unfortunately no longer in existence, but it was founded by um, Sam Shepard, uh, Murray Mednick, and Irene Forness in the, in the late 70s. And it was a time to bring together artists from across the country to create site-specific experimental plays and to train the next generation of theater artists. So I was there for two summers and I studied with Forness both summers there um, and many other people, um, including like David Henry Huang, who wrote M. Butterfly, he was there one summer, um, Murray Mednick, an amazing playwright, um, and many others. Um, so that began my sort of next steps in my journey. And then um, I wanted to pursue a graduate degree in playwriting. Um, and so I was fortunate enough to get accepted into the Yale School of Drama. And so I went there for three years. And in my first year, I studied with Forness. She was my teacher in my first year. Um, so I kind of got to know her on a deeper level in, in, in graduate school um, than I had in the summer workshops. Um, and I only had her that part of the fall semester. So it was, it was not a you know, full year's worth of classes with her, but those experiences uh, dramatically informed my playwriting process. And so uh, when I completed my degree, I moved to New York City and uh, I worked for Forness briefly. Um, I was her typist. <laughs> She was working on a, uh, a new version of her play, Fefu and Her Friends, which if you don't know that play, it's an extraordinary play. Um, and she was writing a new version of it, so she wanted me to help her type it up. This is back in the olden days. Um, so when computers were there, they were not new, but it was still, you know, it was like the late 90s, so it was still kind of novel to have your own laptop, etc. So I, uh, I helped her type it up, um, that was my job. And so then I gave it back to her, and then we stayed in touch. Um, and then I uh, ended up being in New York for about four years. I uh, began teaching when I was in New York. I taught at Wesleyan University for a semester. Um, and then I went to um, Minneapolis, Minnesota for a Playwrights Fellowship at the, at the Playwrights Center. It's called the Jerome Fellowship for Playwriting. And so I was there for a year and really enjoyed the Twin Cities, really enjoyed um, making work there. Um, taught at Augsburg College and McAllister College as well. Um, and then I made my way back to um, the West Coast after that and uh, continued to write plays, began to pursue TV writing a little bit, um, met up with Forness again at a playwriting conference there in 2001. Um, and so, um, and then I kind of uh, continued playwriting, but really wanted to get back to teaching. And so I, I talked to a dear colleague of mine named Naomi Azuka, who's a wonderful, wonderful playwright. She runs the MFA and playwriting program at the University of California, San Diego now. But she was at the time in Santa Barbara teaching there. And so we met and she said, you know, Anne, why don't you consider getting training at UCSB, get your, get your PhD, it'll be great. Um, and I was like, what? <laughs> I had not thought about going back to school at all. But she's an extraordinary theater artist, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna check it out, you know, and I did. And that was like 
Thanksgiving and then I applied in um, the following January and I was accepted, th thankfully. And so I went back to school and I got my PhD in theater studies and began teaching there. Um, began writing my book of the Four Nice Frame as part of my dissertation. Um, and then um, after I finished there, I got a postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Notre Dame. Um, where I am still teaching, thankfully, it turned into a full-time job after the fellowship ended, and so I've been here now for 10 years, teaching in the Midwest in South Bend, Indiana, right next to Chicago. Um, but uh, I'll, I give you kind of my trajectory because, um, you know, Forness is someone who is, um, her, her model was very unconventional. Um, she embraced um, each individual artist's unique uh, vision and she helped her students really um, embrace what that vision what that path is and um, and it, it looked very different for, for each of the playwrights that she that she taught um, so uh, at Notre Dame I teach playwriting and theater studies and um, a couple of about four years ago I was able to begin a Fornes playwriting workshop in Chicago. We did a, a three summer workshop. Um, we invited Nidalia Cruz, who's a wonderful playwright in, in uh, New York City, who was one of um, Fornes's protégés. Um, Fornes taught at the Hispanic Playwrights in Residence Lab, which was an uh, amazing um, residency at Intar Theater in New York. Um, she taught there for um, over a decade, and Nidalia was one of her students there, her assistant there. So when Medalia came to Chicago and taught a workshop and um, Georgina Escobar was uh, there with us for two summers at, in that workshop, uh, along with many other writers from across the country. And so I really got to get to know the um, Forneth playwriting method in a deeper way through Migdalia's mentorship as well. Um, so what I'm gonna share with you today um, is just the sort of overview of Forneth's method. Um, I'll show you a little bit about her life and career and then we'll get to some writing. Um, I'm gonna share my PowerPoint now. So let me just uh, share my screen. Here we go, share. Um, and then play from the start. Okay, um, so this is Forness. Um, she uh, was born in Cuba in 1930. Uh, she came to the U.S. when she was 15 in 1945 to New York City. Uh, she began her um, artistic path in the visual arts. She began painting. Um, she studied painting with uh, Hans Hoffmann, uh, an abstract expressionist painter. Um, then she also studied um, acting um, at the Actor Studio with Lee Strasberg and with Jean Frankel. Um, and right about that time, she began writing plays. Um, and so her playwriting um, became very influential in New York. She's won nine Opie Awards, um, and she was a very influential figure in the off-Broadway off movement, um, uh, where theater artists would uh, form collectives, they would stage their works. Um, she, at, at one point, um, ran a collective called the New York Theater Strategy. Uh, so she really um, was um, on the cutting edge of the New York um, experimental theater community. Um, and then she also began to teach around the country, her plays produced around the country. Like I said, I met her in Los Angeles um, in the 90s. Um, and so uh, her career um, lasted till about the early 2000s. Um, and then um, she developed Alzheimer's disease. And so the last um, you know, decade or so of her life, she was um, living in a home um, lastly in, uh, in Manhattan, in New York City, um, taken care of by, um, by friends and by the staff at the home. And, um, and that was a very intense experience that she taught many of us what it's like to um, still be with someone, even though they um, mentally are not able to recognize who you are. Her presence was still very strong. And she continued to teach me um, about presence and about um, really about uh, humanity um, in the face of her illness. Um, so uh, she taught at INTAR, like I mentioned, the Hispanic Playwrights Project, or Hispanic Playwrights in Residence Lab, I should say. Um, so she began that, and that ran for um, uh, a little over a decade, where she would invite writers to be in residence for a season. They would come um, for playwriting workshops every day in the fall, and then they would write a play, and the plays would be read in the spring. Um, and so she, let's see here. Um, these are, these are her students in 1991. 
Um, her students are sort of a who's who of um, Latinx theater in the US. Um, so this student here is Mindalia Cruz, her protege, who um, is an award-winning playwright who taught the workshops in Chicago recently. Um, Milo Cruz, who was the first Latino to win a Pulitzer Prize for his play, Anna in the Tropics. Um, Caridad Zvich, um, who is a prolific playwright and um, Obi award-winning playwright in New York City, um, are just among the few of, of, of her many illustrious um, alumna and, and alumni. These are some of the others, Luis Alfaro, um, Sri Maraga, Adorno Machado. These are just a few of her, her um, illustrious alumni that really, with her playwriting method, found their, their um, connected to their voices as playwrights and were able to thrive artistically in very extraordinary ways. So the basic parts of the method are, are the following. Um, and we're gonna do a kind of a abbreviated version of these in just a few moments. Um, so essentially, um, she begins her, ex, her, her method with a physical warm up. We're not gonna do a, a physical warm up today um, fully, but we're gonna do a few things just sitting in our seats to kind of just loosen up um, our, our bodies. And this, this part of it is to really sort of, um, to release tension in the body, much like the actor before the actor performs, right? They have warm ups, they do physical warm ups, they do vocal warm ups. It's, it's the same idea, it's sort of finding a way to, um, to calm the body and focus the mind. Then once the physical warm-up is, is complete, um, we sit in our seats and um, we do a um, sense memory exercise, which is a guided visualization. So I'll ask you to close your eyes um, and I'll take you through an uh, uh, exercise where you visualize character in your mind's eye. Um, and then after we go through the guided visualization, then we open our eyes and then we draw what we've seen in our mind's eye. And the drawing part of it is not necessarily meant to be a um, sort of like a, a master class in life drawing. I mean, I myself draw at about like a second grade level. <laughs> so, and like four nights do like stick figures. So the idea is not to like be this, you know, incredible visual artist. It's to basically find a transition from the interior world um, to the world on the page and through some kind of um almost, it's almost like kind of like trying to draw like a map of what you saw in your head you know kind of that, that only you can understand um then after we do that we begin writing an exercise um which i um give you prompts and throughout the exercise um we incorporate found materials um so these could be text fragments um a line of dialogue an object an action um, it could be photographs, postcards, paintings. Um, so I'll be doing that as we go along and I'll explain to you how I'll do that when we get there. Um, but the idea is that you're open to the unexpected through these outside influences, whether it's an, a, a, a line. And whenever you hear the line or the, or the object or the, or the action, you um, try to put it into your scene that you're writing and see what happens. It might surprise you what happens. It might be completely random, like why is there a shoe in the scene? You know, like there, but you just, you find that when these, these unexpected elements enter, it can create some very interesting um, new play material. Um, so this is Hans Hoffman, who Forna studied with, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the abstract expressionist. Um, and then this is one of his paintings and he had a um, theory called the push and pull theory. Um, so the idea was that on the on the canvas, your eye is either pushed or pulled towards certain parts of the canvas based on the, the kinds of shapes and colors that are being used. And so Forness used this idea of push and pull in her directing as well. She also directed all of her world premieres um, as a playwright. And she later in life reflected upon how this, this you know, elemental theory of Hoffman was informative in her, in her work as, as a playwright and a director. Um, and as I mentioned, she studied at, you know, with Lee Strasberg and Lee Jean Frankel, two iconic, you know, um, acting teachers in New York City um, at the Actors Studio. And um, this is Magdalia Cruz, who I mentioned earlier. Um, and this is the workshop that we, we did in Chicago for three summers. Um, I think you'll see uh, Georgina's right here. And she left me some on the other one. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh yeah, she's back here, back here. Um, so yeah, so we had a chance to really delve into this method um, with Magdalia Cruz as our, as our instructor. Um, and it really, um, it helped me tremendously, even though I had worked with Forness, um, Magdalia had years and years with her. And so she really is um, a wonderful instructor and really helped all of us understand the power of this playwriting method.
Um, since that time, um, and actually during that time, I just want to mention uh, another resource. Um, so I'm a part of the Fornes Institute that, um, as uh, Professor McKean mentioned, I was a founding member of the Latinx Theater Commons. And part of my work there is uh, to help uh, co-coordinate the Maria Irene Fornes Institute. So it's a gathering of artists and scholars who are dedicated to Fornes' legacy. And so we have monthly Zoom meetings and we share information, we share projects. Um, and so we have a website now, and so if it interests you to learn more, the website has a lot of information about her career, her life, her plays, and ways to connect to folks who, um, to, who work on her legacy. Um, that's my book I showed you. <laughs> uh, and lastly, I want to mention a documentary. Um, so uh, Michelle Memran is a wonderful um, journalist and artist who created a documentary based on her friendship with Fornes. Um, it took uh, many years to create and it came out in 2018, um, in the year that Fornes passed away. Um, it came out earlier in that year. Um, and it's a beautiful testament to her friendship with Fornes. And also it helps document Fornes' uh, legacy, her, her career. Um, but I think more than anything, I've seen it now like I don't know, five times. Um, I, for me, it really evokes um, the spirit of Fornes. Um, so I'm going to play for you the trailer. It's just a very brief trailer on YouTube and um, it, it'll give you a flavor for the documentary that I know um, Notre Dame has a canopy. I'm not sure if UTEP has canopy. It's like, yeah, so you, you can view it through, through the library website through canopy. Um, and that's one, one way you can see it. Um, so I, let's see, I think I have to stop share for a second and then um, share again and go to Oh, uh -huh. one second, guys. Just give me one second here. Oops, I'm not gonna do that. Okay. Okay, sorry. Okay. Ah, uh -huh, here we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, so here is the trailer for the documentary. Am I the subject of your film? Yes. Am I so fascinating that you feel I don't need script, I don't need rehearsal? I myself, I will be so interesting. <laughs> people say, who is that? Irene, as she prefers to be called, was born in Cuba, wrote over 40 plays, won nine OBs, nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. No one ever knows who she is. She's the one that's been out there cutting the brush, paving the trails. Every play is different. Each play is demonstrating a different muscle. I have so much style that you don't even know. You think it's mistakes. Try not to think too much about what makes good writing, but just let it come out. There's nobody who's had the influence on American playwriting as a teacher. I often think of it as the experience of Alice when she goes through the whole The neighborhood of artists. The real deal. <laughs> Everybody always fell in love with her. I always called her Doña Juana. To me, writing plays is not a way of earning a living, but it is a way of earning a life. Being an artist, you have to abandon any notion of things making sense. It was loss of memory implied that I don't remember anything or that there is a loss. The whole purpose of her classes was to teach them not to get stuck. I haven't been writing for how long? For years and years. <laughs> Irene, it's Michelle. Not only kid. Writing, Michelle calls talking to her camera writing. Is this part of your story? I don't hide anything. I am what I am. I am a playwright. It's my life. It's my work. You changed a lot of people's lives. Oh, yes? Change my life. Does this movie go into the future or is it only the past? 
these are memories like dreams. It's true. Um, so that hopefully gives you um, a um, thank you so much for coming, everyone. Um, well, we have had a very nice experience. Oh, so funny is that? That's Michelle. So that's great. <laughs> that was me. I was like, wow, Michelle's here too. Oh my god, how great. Um, she's a filmmaker. Um, so, um yeah, I hope that gave you an, a, a taste of uh, Forness's spirit um, that really infuses all of this work. Um, one of my favorite parts of that um, trailer is uh, she says, um, playwriting is not a way of making a living, it's a way of earning a life. Um, and I just always think about that um, when I think about Forness and I think about um, the ways in which she um, has helped so many people. Um, earn a life in the theater. Um, so what I want to do now is um, go ahead and move into our writing workshop. Um, so um, I guess we have, yeah, we've got a, a handful of folks with us, um, some on camera, some off camera, um, which is fine. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to lead you through just a really brief um, physical warm, warm in your chair. You're going to sit in your chair. I'll just do a few stretches in your chair. And then we'll do a guided visualization of character, of creating character and characters. And then um, we'll do writing together. Um, and when we do writing together, I'm going to periodically um, say some phrases, some text fragments, whether it's a line of dialogue, whether it's an object or an action. I'll also type it into the chat box in, in case anyone can't fully hear or understand what I'm saying, which hopefully you can. Sometimes I talk a little too fast, so pardon me, I'll try to keep it uh, more slow. <laughs> um, but anyhow, um, and then also um, when we do the writing together, I'm going to share some images. And I tried this with my students, it seems to work, so I'm going to put them in the chat box and they're low, um, they're low, uh, uh, they're, they're small files, so they're not very big files. So you can, once you see the file, just click on it and the image comes up on your screen. And the idea with the images is, is just to see if something in the image strikes you. You know, maybe there's a, a tone of the image, maybe it's a one little detail of the image. But the whole idea is to be open to the unexpected, to be open to sources of inspiration that can come from, from many different avenues and, and see if that could be useful to your writing. Um, alrighty. Um, actually, before we begin, are there, are there any questions? I should just stop there for a second. Are there any questions about anything I've said so far? Yes. And what, what's your name? Larissa. Larissa. Yeah. Your... Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for, for doing this. I'm very excited. Um, so my question is, it's mostly just, um, would you recommend writing on paper, even though it's slower, or is a computer okay? Because I know that we're going to be drawing, too. Yeah, that's a great question, Lester, and I'm glad you asked me that because I prefer if you write on paper. Okay, um, awesome. Because that, um, when Fornest gave her workshops and when I teach my workshops and teach playwriting, um, it's important that when we do in-class writing like this, we write with the pen and pencil on paper because there's something about this gesture, this is like, a, it's, it's, a, it's an ancient <laughs> uh, muscular tradition, right? Um, and, uh, and then when you, when you finish the workshop, then this thing, the typing thing is a different kind of, um, uh, energy and exercise. And that's important too, when you transfer the writing onto the computer and then you can write onto the computer. But I, but for the in-class writing, cause we'll be doing drawing as you mentioned, Larissa, which is, uh, true. Um, it's important that we do it with a uh, pen and pencil and paper. Yeah. Um, any other questions before we start? Okay, great. Um, so first of all, um, just make sure that you are um, comfortable in your, oh my goodness, I think I've known you for a long time. Is that Elvira? Hi, Anne. <laughs> How are Hi. you? Yeah, we've crossed paths a lot. I'm so happy to see you and I'm so happy that um, Adriana and the theater department brought you. Uh, we met, I think we've seen each other in Minnesota 
and yeah. then we'd seen each other in New York yeah, when right. I was a film student. I was a student of Eduardo Machado. I never got to work with Irene, but I did work with Eduardo, and then and now I'm El Paso is my hometown, so I'm here teaching in the Chicano Studies program, yeah. and I'm still doing theater. I teach uh, Chicano theater and uh, Chicano cinema here at UTEP. So. And I just finished my PhD, so so I'm like still trying to catch up with life. <laughs> but anyway, I'm super excited to be here. So thank you so much. And uh, I just I had a bunch of uh, errands that I had to do today, so I apologize for you know not being made up. But I'm wearing my work polo, so that's professional, you know. <laughs> my goodness. Um, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and get comfortable in our seats and our chairs wherever we're sitting. Um, and I'm just going to begin with just a couple of stretches um, that we can do sitting down. Um, so we're just going to start by putting our left ear to our left shoulder, just stretching out our neck. Um, writers often hold a lot of tension in the neck, so just stretch the neck to the left side and just feel that gentle stretch. And then again, now the right ear to the right shoulder, stretch out the left side of the neck. Good, and back to center. And then look over your left shoulder and to center and look over your right shoulder and to center, look down your left pocket, to center, look down your right pocket, to center, and then just um, take your right shoulder and just go back, shoulder roll to the back, and then reverse it, so shoulder roll on the right shoulder to the front, And the left shoulder then goes back. And reverse it. Good. And now um, take your hands and interlace your fingers. And then just twist them back and forth like this. Kind of like you're rolling them in a circle, kind of like a uh, a spherical thing <laughs> and then reverse the direction. This is good for stretching out the fingers and the hands and the wrists. Okay, good. Okay, great. Um, so let's go ahead and just sit in our seats now and go ahead and close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, we're gonna take a couple of deep breaths. So in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And with your eyes closed, I want you to picture a memory of yourself before the age of 12, when you were standing near a body of water. This could be a natural body of water, could be man-made. So take a moment to observe a memory from your life where you're standing next to a body of water. And when that memory of yourself standing next to a body of water is in your mind's eye, I want you to observe the location of this memory. Is it interior 
or exterior? Is it day or night? Are there objects in this location? If so, are the objects man-made or natural? What are the colors in this location? What are the sounds in the location? Smells? If you touch the water, what is the temperature of the water? Is it cold or warm or hot? And once this memory of this location is clear to you, you can open your eyes and briefly draw a picture of this location and write down in a few words the memory that occurred in this location. So sort of a brief summary, a couple sentences, something to jog your memory. And start finishing up. And finish up your last thought for the moment. And put your pens down again and close your eyes a second time.
And with your eyes closed a second time, I want you to again picture in your mind's eye this location you just described where you're standing as a young person by a body of water. So let that image return to your mind's eye. And when that image is in your mind's eye again, I want you to picture yourself as a young person standing in that location. Then I want you to picture yourself exiting the location and a character enters and takes your place. So allow the character to enter the location in your place. The character could be someone that you know, based on someone you know, it could be totally fictional. So allow the character now to enter this location. And when this character is in your mind's eye, I want you to observe all the aspects of this character, starting with the face. Look at the eyes, nose, and mouth of this character. Look at the hair of the character. What is the color of the hair, the length of the hair, the texture of the hair. What is the character wearing? What kind of clothing are they wearing? What is the color of the clothing? What is the clothing made of? Observe their body in the clothing. What is their height, weight, and shape? The arms, torso, and legs. Look at the feet of this character. If they're wearing shoes, what kind of shoes are they? What is the color? What are they made of? If they're not wearing shoes, look at their feet. What kind of feet do they have? And when the character is clear to you, you can open your eyes and draw a quick picture of the character and write down the character's name, their age, and where they live. And these things can be something you decide right now. If you don't know it, that's fine too. But if you can, Write down the name, the age, where they live, and draw a quick picture of your character.
and start finishing up. And finish up your last thought for the moment. And put your pens down again. And close your eyes one last time. And with your eyes closed one last time, I want you to, again, picture this character you've just described in drawing and in a few words. Picture this character standing in the location that you had previously described as well. So take a moment to allow the character and the location to come into your mind's eye again. And when this character in this location is in your mind's eye again, I now want you to picture a second character entering this location to interact with the first character. The second character might be based on someone you know or be completely fictional. The second character might be known to the first character or completely unknown. So allow now the second character to enter this location. And when the second character is in the location, again, I want you to observe all the aspects of your second character. Starting with the face, look at the eyes, nose, and mouth of your second character. Look at the hair of your second character, the color, the length, the texture of the hair. Look at your second character's body. What is the height, weight, and shape of the body? The arms, torso, and legs. What is the second character wearing? What kind of clothing are they wearing? What is the texture? What are they made of? Observe the feet of the second character. If they're wearing shoes, what kind of shoes are they? What is the color? What are they made of? If they're not wearing shoes, observe their feet, the size and shape of the feet. And when the second character is clear to you, you can open your eyes and draw a picture of your second character. And again, write down the name, the age, and where the second character lives.
So now that you have your two characters, I want you to begin writing a scene between these two characters in this location. And I'm going to be giving you some prompts during the writing. Um, I'll say it out loud and I'll also put it into the chat box. And again, you can use the prompt um, if it's useful to you. You can ignore it if it's, if it's going to be a distraction. But the idea is to be open to the unexpected and see how the prompt might weave its way into your dialogue, into the stage directions, somehow into the world of the scene that you're writing. So I'll give you um, the first prompt is a line that you can start your scene with, or you could start it with another line. The first prompt is a line, I'm afraid to tell you. I'm afraid to tell you. The next prompt is an object, a stone, a stone.
The next prompt is an action. Riding a bicycle. Riding a bicycle. So I've just put an image into the text box. Um, see if you can open the image and see if the image in some way might inspire the writing.
There's a prompt, it's a line, it's in your head. It's in your head. The next prompt, there's an object, a piece of metal, a piece of metal.
And there's another image in the chat box. You can open and see if it somehow inspires the writing. The next prompt is an action, waving to someone, waving to someone.
And there's another image in the text box. And you can open it and see if it somehow inspires the writing. And we'll write for about another five minutes. and start wrapping up.
and start wrapping up your last thought for the moment. And start wrapping up your very last thought for the moment. All right. Um, so, um, we have about a uh, half an hour left. And so what uh, we do next in the workshop is we just do, uh, normally we take a break, but because we only have a half an hour left, I'm, I'm gonna just continue onward if that's okay with everyone. Um, so uh, we normally do it, we do what I call a check-in. And the check-in is a chance for each of the writers in the group to briefly share with the group um, what came up for them in the writing. So how the exercise was, um, something that was surprising, challenging, inspiring, just to kind of check in with the group as to how the exercise was for the writing today. Um, so ideally I'd love just to go around the group and have everyone do a brief check-in. Um, and uh, some folks have cameras on, some folks don't, but if it's okay, I'd like to go around the group. Um, so let's see, um, let's see, could we start with um, Larissa? Just a brief check-in. Hi. Um, well, something that uh, was really surprising for me about the exercise is that I'm, I'm um, well, I'm taking this workshop as a person who I don't, I would like to write more, but uh, it's, it's kind of, scary and intimidating to to begin writing so um something that i found very surprising is that my first character was a middle-aged man and it's something that i've never really attempted to write i usually stick to women and younger people if i can um but no both characters are middle-aged and the and the most prominent one the one that stuck to me the most was a middle-aged man and um that was really really interesting um also approaching um, uh, the specificity of the memory that you um, told us to invoke was really cool because I'd never I hadn't thought of it as a memory a conscious memory that I had and it unlocked a lot of really interesting stuff so that was pretty cool mm. great thank you Larissa um let's see how about uh Lisbeth Well, hi, my name is Isbeth, and um, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, it is uh, challenging because I don't usually write. <laughs> I'm more uh, drawn towards uh, movement, music, and, and I lately have been doing embroidery work, so uh, that's something that I usually do it, but I really don't get a lot into do something with words, but th this is always interesting and, and it's, it's always amazing to explore something like that. Um, I don't know if I got it right, but um, oh, when I went to my uh, experience uh, of standing near, uh, what was it, uh, uh, water? Mm -hmm. Standing next to, um, I wrote about myself, about the, the experience, and I created these other two characters uh, because I'm bilingual. <laughs> <laughs> my text is it's both in English and Spanish so um, yeah it's um it's challenging it is challenging but I I guess the ones you you give the the prompts and the, the ideas and the images this uh, kind of something inside of you uh, 
burst and, and the words came out. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to make any sense, but I mean, the, the images and the words came out and, and I don't know, I, I feel this, this is something that I, I look forward to do it more often <laughs> because um, who knows, maybe there is something that, the, that it's in here or in here that it needs to come out and, and who knows, it might, it might be, uh, if not to put it on, on a performance or anything, at least it's for sure is, um, it gives a sense of healing and because it's something related to myself, you know, and, and myself before the age of 12 was, was a very turbulent time. So it, 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 it definitely uh, look forward to doing more of this. So yeah, <laughs> but it is challenging, very challenging. Thank you so much, Lisbeth. Um, how about um, Maria G? Hi. Um, so I've always said that I'm not a theater person, but I think I secretly am. <laughs> um, so I uh, I actually like to write, um, and I thought about going into like a like a creative writing program, things like that. So what I noticed about my story is that it just it was like it turned into like a story, like not um, you know. So it's like I was trying to you know put in like. Um, I don't know, um, you know, where she said, he said, you know, things like that. But then all of a sudden it just kind of started to like flow like a, like a story. Um, and the prompt mm -hmm. really helped because then it just kind of took off like on a life of its own. Like Lisbeth said, it was just like, once you would say the, like the prompt, I was like, oh, and it would like change. So it was really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I don't know. It started getting a little dark. So now I'm kind of worried, but <laughs> we'll see how it is. <laughs> And how about Allison? So I think part of it was that I was distracted because the reason why I didn't have my camera on earlier was because I had somebody else in the room with me. But um, it was like, I wanted to write a story and I wanted to get like a story out, but even the characters knew that it wasn't going anywhere. Like they were just like, it's a strange day today, isn't it? And they were just like, yeah, very quiet. There's nothing really going on, is there? And I was just like, don't have this conversation. Don't mock me. <laughs> um, but I thought it was really interesting that, I mean, I try to incorporate every single um, prompt that you gave us, except for, I couldn't fit in the Frida Kahlo one, but um, I got in almost every single prompt that you gave us. And uh, it was kind of interesting how they kind of uh, took off that way. I, I think I have a couple of funny lines in there that were just like, are we going to talk about the thing that you said you weren't going to talk about? No. Okay. Well, are you going to talk about the, the thing that you found? No. All right. Well, now what? <laughs> so it was just kind of like funny watching the characters kind of like talk to me through themselves. And I was just like, I'm sorry. I don't have much for you right now. Great. Thank so, you yeah. so much. Um, <laughs> how about Talina? Um, yeah, I kind of had a similar situation as Allison. Um, I was finding myself, I was trying to challenge myself by focusing on dialogue, and I, I kept finding myself really doubting it, and, and I couldn't really get out of that, like, critic, critic's voice. Um, and so I kept trying to go back to that memory and, like, trying to place myself back in in that space next to the body of water um but somehow that kept distracting me even more and I ended up having snippets of different moments and different characters and different settings um but it did not feel, feel super coherent so um yeah Great, thank you so much. Um, how about uh, Melinda? Uh, well, hi. Uh, uh, I found the, that the prompts were really helpful, especially like as I was going forward. Um, and it also just flowed out in one stream of consciousness. And so um, right now it feels more like a novel <laughs> than a play. Um, but I feel, I can see the spaces where I could add more dialogue and where, uh, something that was either thought of in the, in the character's head 
could become like a stage direction. And so this could easily change. So I was, I was very surprised at kind of how that happened. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. And how about uh, Shu Wan? Hello, let's see. Shoot, sh there you go. Okay, you've unmuted. Okay. Do you want to share with us how the exercise went for you? Yes, it was very nice. And was there anything that um, was surprising or um, unexpected? I just couldn't visualize the second character. Mm very clearly since it's a, a non person mm -hmm. or the first character that i knew so that's kind of easy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but for second the sun somebody coming and then completely a nun it's very hard for me to see all the detail i can mm -hmm. see kind of the age the gender kind of the height but to kind of visualize a person I had never seen, that's kind of hard for me. Mm -hmm. Great, well, thank you so much for sharing. I'll, I'll get back to some comments about all of your thoughts, but I wanna make sure we get to the whole group first. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, uh, is it Jasmine or Hasmin? Jasmine works. Um, well, what I found interesting was that, um, um, I had like the memory of what we were saying in the picture of my head, but then it was influenced by the first uh, word that we were given. Uh, it like made the memory kind of warped in a sense. Mm, great, thank you so much. Um, all right, and then uh, Dominique. So what I found interesting about this whole exercise is that it brought me back that I haven't thought of in years. Mm -hmm. And it kind of just more so I found myself writing my writing a lot of like not so much personal ish like stuff, but it was more so just like writing down closure just about reassurance and just how realistically how you can compare theater to real life events that and I'll do reality that how those two are not really that different. Mm. Great. Thank you so much. And do any of the professors want to check in? You don't have to, but. You know, I actually enjoyed, even though I don't, I don't do visual art at all. Like I hate drawing. Like even when I was little, I hated coloring. Like I was not a fan of kindergarten. And I actually really enjoyed it because I thought I'm creating these people to create a story. So that was something I didn't think I was going to enjoy. And I, I really did. I was like, oh, I, don't, I want to finish. So that was, that was very different for me. Great. I know something I really appreciated was the prompts and not knowing what they were going to be in advance was hugely helpful to me. And I, I am one when I do any sort of creative writing immediately start to judge and cross things out and have a hard time getting into the flow state because of that but having those unexpected prop prompts came come in really helped to get into that flow state so i uh, that actually leads me to a question i have which you don't have to answer now but i would be curious how if you were going to lead yourself through something like this on your own mm -hmm. if there is a way to like give yourself surprise prompts um, yeah, I can answer that. Um, the only, well, mm, it's, I, I think, well, there's a couple ways to do it. I mean, one is um, to have a bunch of prompts that are just in like a glass jar. And I just sort of pick one out at random and then like use it like that. So like they're already pre-written, but I just like pick it out randomly. Um, or, you know, I've done it where I've had just like a list of, you know, prompts on a page. And so if I get stuck, I just kind of look at the page, like whatever catches my eye first, I just go with that. So, um, so in a way that, that, I mean, they're not completely, you know, unexpected because I've written them down previously, but the way I 
connect with them can be more spontaneous. Um, but it's not, it won't be quite the same as having someone who's not me <laughs> do it. But, um, but yeah, that, those are two approaches that, that I've used. Yeah. Um, yes. So for me, I, I would just say, um, the prompts for me escalated the drama <laughs> and I didn't start thinking I was going to write something dramatic <laughs> you know what i mean and 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 i agree with some of the other writers that they said it got dark real quick um and when you first gave us the first prompt like to think about standing by the body of water like i already have like even a photo of my childhood of so i already was like whoa you like took me to a specific place and and then when you said to introduce like the second character um and this and maybe this is something you can address too is like and some other people have talked about it too i can't help but think about people that i know you know what i mean especially in my family which is something that i want to be very careful of because i don't want to out their stories but i just so i i do my best to like change a lot of things so it's not so you know uh factual um so what I'm wondering, so first of all, I love the prompts because it it rose, it rose, raised the drama real quick and, and it was a very interesting scenario. And, and so what I'm wondering now with this scene, I'm like, is this the end of the play or is this the beginning? You know what I mean? So I'm kind of, that's where I'm at right now. I'm like, where is this scene? You know, and, and so if I were to continue developing this, that's, I guess that's where I would maybe start outlining and thinking about where I want to go with this. Um, so anyway, I always love these exercises because I, I feel like as a normal everyday person, I try to just be happy and cheery. But when I become a writer, it's like dark stuff comes out. And so it's like, ah, you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah, that's, that's my uh, conflict as a writer, I guess. <laughs> oh, but what I will say though, is when you brought up the Frida image, that helps me a lot because sometimes when I'm writing drama, uh, which is mostly what I end up writing, I want to like, I have to think about the audience too. I'm like, gosh, this, this is too depressing or you know what I mean? And so when you brought in the Frida image that helped me to like bring in surrealism, which, which was another interesting uh, moment in the scene that I ended up writing. So this is a really cool exercise. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, so thank you all for sharing your um, experiences about the exercise. Um, I'll just uh, talk about a, a few common threads. Um, so uh, this method is really meant as a chance to experiment and explore. And um, you may find a new character, a new story, um, a new idea. Um, that you could use for a project that you are developing for a class, for a theater company, for uh, some other project. Um, but the idea is that sort of having a space to explore and experiment. Um, so it's, um, so that's one. And then also, um, you know, being open to the unexpected is, is a big part of it too. So, um, you know, several people mentioned, you know, these prompts either were like illuminating or they were helpful or they kind of help people not be so um, sort of planning in advance what's going to happen. And that's what I find is an exciting part of this method is that it really, um, well, because when we're open to the unexpected, we can often delve into depths that we wouldn't consciously choose to do perhaps. Um, so, and I, a lot of this method really helps us delve into the subconscious to that deep, deep part of us that, have sto that has stories that we need to share with the world. Um, so that's, that's something that I think uh, I continually benefit from in this, in this um, method. Um, and, and I would agree. I mean, some people said it was difficult to visualize um, sometimes uh, and or um, difficult to, to sort of separate between the personal experiences and people that you know versus a fictional. And that's a process, that's an exploration process. I mean, um, uh, oftentimes we will base a character on a part of someone we know or take sort of an aspect of someone we know. And it's a process of developing what that character then becomes. Um, 
I liked what I heard about the idea that the characters begin to speak and it's unexpected what they say. And, and it's sort of um, who shows up is unexpected. And that's another part of it too, is like just being open to who's gonna show up in, in your mind's eye? You know, what's that gonna be that memory or that character? Um, and, and I think too, in terms of the tone, I mean, when, when you mentioned um, uh, Dr. Carisal Dukes, <laughs> uh, when you mentioned um, your experience of like, you know, the tone versus like real life versus, you know, dramatic writing, um, you know, I, I find, I thought of Fornes, you know, and Fornes's plays, you know, if you don't know them already, I really recommend that you take some time to read them. Um, for, I mentioned Fefu and her friends, and it's a, a sort of a light, a lighter piece, but, um, uh, but she, many of her pieces are, you know, really explore uh, human suffering, really explore um, issues around um, class and, uh, and the female um, journey. And so, um, and some of them are, have, you know, very tragic um, conclusions. And, um, but Fornes was someone who was a very, you know, uh, kind of sweet and uh, buoyant. And you, and you saw from the, the trailer, just a very whimsical person. So it's interesting, like, she's like, I'm such a sweet person. And why are my plays this way? Like, it's just, it's just part of the human experience, that dichotomy, you know, that, that intersection of like, you know, light and dark, you know, tragic and comic. And I think, um, just being open to that complexity, I think, is, is, a, is a part of this method as well. Um, so we have about 10 minutes left, and usually then at the end of the workshop, um, we open it up to have people to share with the group um, any part of their in-class writing. Um, and this part of the workshop is basically, um, there's no feedback at all from anyone. Um, it's a chance to basically hear um, in the writers group um, what other writers have come up with and to share with the other writers what's possible given this exercise. So, um, you know, people can read a little fragment, they can read the whole thing they wrote, um, but it's just a kind of a chance to get a window into, you know, our different writer universes that we all, you know, have within us and, and, and sort of seeing what people come up with given the same, the same exercise. So, you know, that said, would anyone care to share any part of their, their in-class writing today, the workshop writing? Yes, and that is Allison, yes. So, um, I'll just read you all of it because the part that I think is really funny doesn't make any sense unless you know what all the rest of it is. So, if I ask have, when you're reading, if you wouldn't mind if with the characters, like just saying the character name and then the line, so we can kind of keep track in our head of who is who. Of course, yeah, that's what I was gonna do. So we have two characters, we have Valentine and Eli. Um, Valentine is non-binary, so I used uh, the word they to represent what they're doing, um, and Eli is a uh, boy. So, Valentine, I'm afraid to tell you, Eli, it's okay not to speak. Silence is nice. Valentine's not, Valentine nods. They look out at the water, um, uh, staring at the waves. A moment. Valentine pulls out a small, smooth stone from their pocket. They look at it um, in concentration. Uh, feeling the, the thin, um, feeling it in their hand, they toss it into the water. Eli, what was that? Valentine, a memory. Eli, of? Valentine, home, when I was younger. B, do you remember the bikes dad got us when we were little? How mine was white and pink? Eli, um, and how you painted it red? Valentine, dad was so upset. Uh, Eli, he almost didn't take us camping. We haven't done that in a while, huh? Valentine, no, I miss that old spot. Everything, everything but the mosquitoes. Eli, did you hear what happened to it? Valentine, no. Eli, I heard they, uh, they tore it down. They tore down the camp. It was replaced by a mall or something. Pause, Valentine is, uh, is clearly upset. Um, but don't worry. It lives on in your, in here, he points to his heart, and in your head. Valentine sighs. The, the light catches something in the rocks. Eli watches as they get up and goes to it. Eli, going over there. What is it? Valentine, tags. Eli, tags? Valentine, like dog tags. Eli, let me see. He takes the tags from Valentine, 
looks them over in his hands. Eli, I can't make out the name. He puts them on. Valentine, it's been an odd day. Eli, I guess. Just quiet. Are we going to talk about it? About what you didn't want to tell me? Valentine, no. Are we going to talk about the tags? Eli, no. Oh, hey, look, it's Andy. He waves. Hi, Andy. Andy off stage. Hey, <laughs> Eli. Uh, I like Andy. We haven't hung up with uh, with him in a while, not since Valentine. Yeah, I'm really, like, yeah. Remember when we used to go to the mountains with him? Valentine, that was nice. We should do that again, Eli. We should. I'll call him up and see what if he's up for it. And I was just like, those conversations are going absolutely nowhere, but all right. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I'm here to share with the group. Um, I could I could share something, I think. <laughs> a very short little bit. Um sorry, there we go. Um so it's also kind of a little bit in English and in Spanish, but uh we'll we'll see how that goes. Um Christine, uh you keep saying that. What did you say your name was? Umberto. Um uh, Umberto. <laughs> Christine, Umberto. Umberto, but you can call me Bert or Beto or my name is strange in English. So Christine, nonsense, Umberto, not that hard at all. See, it's all in your head. Uh, Umberto, magic. Christine, right? Uh, Christine, the very one. To the bartender, could we get this gentleman? Um, what were you having? Umberto, um, una piña colada, por favor. Christine, a piña colada, and I'll have a dos equis, please. Umberto, ¿sabe qué? Uh, yo también una dos X, por favor. Uh, and that's, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It's time for maybe one or two more short ones. Anyone else want to share? I'll, I'll share my surrealism scene. <laughs> um, so in the scene, the character that the second character that walked in, uh, he's been looking for the first character. Um, and so she so he obviously finds her and it, it escalated. So at this point in the scene, he's he's choking her and like she's about to pass out. And then at that moment is when she sees an image of herself talking to herself. And, and it, the image she sees of herself is like she's bloodied and you know he's beat her before. Um, and then so, so she's talking to herself and she's saying, wake up. Um, so she basically says, uh, so Adela falls into a dream state. She sees an image of herself all bloodied and beat up. Adela's image speaks, wake up Adela, wake, uh, get up. Don't let this fool disappear you, fight back. It's time we fight back. Kick them in the balls now. Wake up, Adela. Adela starts to fight back and struggle. She manages to kick Ramiro in the balls. She grabs a stone and hits Ramiro hard on the side of the head and he falls to the ground. Adela stands up and grabs a stick from nearby and beats him with it. Adela, I hate you. You fucking asshole, you piece of shit. <laughs> Sorry for the bad words, uh, but that's where it ends. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, three minutes. Is there any anyone who wants to read a short one? Yes. Go ahead, Lisbeth. You go. Um, went on a vacation to Las Vegas. So excited, so excited. I was so excited. I just throw myself into a pool, and the water hit my head like the heaviest of the stones. After that, I got out of the pool. The worst headache started, I felt my head was going to explode. I went back to our hotel room. ¿Qué tienes, mija? My tía Elvira asked. No sé, me metí a la alberca, de un clavado y sentí que el agua me pegó en la cabeza bien fuerte. I told my tía. It's good that my tía is here, because I'm afraid to tell you, mamá. You would say I just, that I just want attention, like, like always. 
Sí, tía, sentí como si me pegué contra una piedra. I told my tía. A ver, descansa tantito. Kindly said my tía, my tía to me. Suddenly, my little prima Dorita, the most chiple, came into the room. ¿Qué le pasa, Liz? ¿Por qué no viene a la alberca? Asking her spoiled, awful little voice. No se siente bien, Dorita. Regrésate con tus primos y juega con ellos. My tía told her so nicely that I felt like throwing up. I hate it, Dorita. If we don't have time for me, that's okay. We can, is that, that's it, right? Are we wrapping up there or did you? Yeah, I mean, I, sure, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, great, great. go for oh, it. Oh, no, 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 I'm good. That's okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Thank you though. For time, like I know there's like one minute left, but like, yes. yeah, do it, do it, do it, read it. Okay, I'll find something really short. Um. So this is Bebe and Seb, and Bebe is the mom, and Seb is the five-year-old son. Uh, look, look, Bebe, look at the stone. It has all the colors in the rainbow. Do you think someone painted it? Can I paint one like this when we get home? You can paint anytime you like, my love. Why are you crying, mommy? I'm not crying, sweetie. Are your tears going to add to the water in the ocean and make it even saltier? Bebe laughs. I'm not sad about Uncle or Seb. I'm not sad about Uncle Bryant, Mommy. Grandma said he was sick and that for people sick like that, dying is better than living so he can go home to be with God. I'll stop there. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure to be with you all today. I hope that this um, exercise was useful to your process as writers. And I just want to thank um all the professors for inviting me today and um it's been really a, a, a joy to be with you all all the way from indiana <laughs> all the way across the country uh yes thank you so much uh and it's been a pleasure and such a gift to have you with us and share this work with us today i think i can speak on behalf of everyone by saying it meant a lot to all of us so thank you mm -hmm. for that um, before we go, I have an announcement about next week's speaker for the Dean's Speaker Series. Gregory Ramos um, is going to be speaking on transforming life to theater. And that is next Tuesday at one o'clock. Um, also, for those of you that don't know, our um, Reunion Revolution Radio Festival is premiering this Saturday and it is running throughout September on KTAP, the State of the Art show. And I would love if everybody could check in and listen to that. We have four brand new plays that were written specifically for radio. Um, and so that's the next four Saturdays in September, 11.30 a.m. Mountain Time on KTAP. Anything else, Adriana, are we good? That's good, thank you all for joining us. And, and thank you, this was, an amazing way to spend a, an afternoon and kind of reinvigorate that, that creativity. So thank you so much for your time and your talent. And we hope to see you all uh, next week. So please do mm -hmm. stay safe and well. Good to see you, Anne. I, I use your book in my class. <laughs> my students read, read your book. So it's great to see you. Me too, me and too. thank you for this. And thank you, Adriana and Kim. This was a great workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Have a good day, everyone. You too.